Okay, I'm going to record uh, how we do the table hockey, poggy, puck game, uh, how we design it up. And we might do uh, the basketball one you guys have been coming up with too. So, I'm not going to go through the basics of the mouse and moving about and stuff like that. I'm not going to I'm, I'm not going to do that every single time I record something. Um, if you have trouble with uh, getting on the SketchUp, setting up your um, millimeters, uh, moving the mouse around, please go watch the model truck one. I just recorded it and I talk a little bit more about making components, um, moving, you know, navigating around the screen. Um, editing and the, the fundamentals the core fundamentals what the x y and z axis are and stuff like that please watch that take five minutes and do it as i go through this tutorial i'll i'll probably talk about things like that but i won't go into as much of the introduction as i did with the truck and there's other videos i do too feel free to do as any of them the passive speaker you know i've got them all on the youtube channel Okay, so let's start new. I know I'm in millimeters. Um, you should be too. There's a figure there. He's there for scale. So uh, I'm going to leave him. He, he doesn't really make much difference at the moment. It'd be useful if I'm drawing a house and um, can sort of tell where my camera is when I have him there. Okay, let's... I tend to think about it the same way I do in the workshop. The I kind of draw the, the same way I would cut pieces out, which is I tend to do the larger, longer pieces first, and that way if I make a mistake, I can turn them into the shorter pieces. If I cut um, a shorter piece too short, I can't do much with it. Okay? If I cut the longer piece short, I can always turn it into something. So I'm a bit, a bit thoughtful about waste and... And preparation okay and you're learning how to mark and, and set things out them you really you're learning the design and how to plan more than hammering a nail um, if you started work on a building site and did an apprenticeship tomorrow you know in a year's time you're better at hammering nails because you do it all the time okay let's draw the board first let's Take the tool, the rectangle, because I know it's rectangle. Most things we do um, are rectangular. Uh, I usually start from the origin, but I could start over here. Okay. I'm going to click like that. Now, um, if I use the arrow keys, I can change my orientation. Just a little pro tip for you. I want to draw it flat down on, on the Z axis like that. So um, I'm going to type in what I want. Um, just by looking at the dimensions down the bottom right hand corner, I can kind of tell the the orientation. Um, I always get that mixed up. I guess I've got um, uh, looks like I've got x comma y. You know, um, that's probably the way that it always is. I don't know. In math, do you write x comma y? Probably x y z. Okay, um, makes sense. So let's do um, length first, 600, comma, 300. Okay. I cut you a board on the table saw in the workshop that is that, that dimension. Now I'm going to say what I want. So I need to, I've done my sketch. I need to add a feature. I need to um, do a third step. Down below the rectangle, there's push-pull. I'm going to pick what I want to push-pull. So obviously, it'd be that face up and down. Now, if I was doing it out of um, plywood, like thin plywood, three-ply, um, or acrylic, I would be 3.2 mil. Look like that. Okay. Um, 3.2 being one-eighth of an inch. Or if I was doing it out of um, the thicker plywood, which I, I might do, it's usually we get about seven mil, eight mils. So I'm going to make it seven millimeters. Okay. So you've got a bit of plywood like that. For the time being, I'm going to select it all, drag a box around it, right click, 
and make it a component. I'll call it my base table, something like that. Okay, so you were cut that. And then you had to build a frame around there. We might build the frame in multiple ways. Okay, so what we could do is we could think about um, very, the most basic way we could do it is we could draw, um, I might do, okay, let's do the long ones this way. So I can see my orientation at the bottom 600 by 33. I want, I obviously I don't, I, I could dress timber down to 33 mil, but it's very odd. So. I'm going to take 600 mil, I'll put in my number, 600 mil, uh, and I'm going to cut out a 19 mil, like that. Now that's a component I'm drawing on top of a component. If it, if I click on it, and it's not a component, I'm going to just end up with one big object and have trouble changing it. I mean, I could do that, but I have trouble modifying it if I do that. Uh, anyway, here's where I can start adding my design. I might want to have a look at what it looks like. Um, let's say 140 up oh, too high. Okay, so I usually take the 140 millimeter timber and I'll cut it in two. But I would say for this job, we probably don't want to go much above um, or below about 45. So I'll go back. I'll click up. About 45 mil, okay? Then I'll adjust my view and I'll drag a box around it and go right click the component and call it um, side. I'll make one side and one ends, okay? Then I'll go to move and I'll move it from this corner, press control, which will make a duplicate copy along the green and put it like that. Now I'll make another piece here. So I might go like this, I might go up from that corner, so I clicked on this corner here, that corner there, and then I came in 19 mil. Double click, so I just put my mouse on it and went one, two, three, it all went blue, make component, I'll call this one end. Okay, so I've got an end, there is an end, and um, I'll move it this way, from that corner to that corner. So it snaps in, okay. Now I've got my frame. Beautiful, I've got a frame. I've got really simple joinery on this one. Um, I might make another version of it in a minute. So I've got a butt joint there and I've got a butt joint here. So I can imagine um, some nails in there, a bit of glue and nails up through here. There is a component missing, um, which is the middle bit. The reason I made my butt joints go this way and not, I'll show you, I'll move this one down. Move. That one in. The reason I made my butt joints like that with my end piece butting up to my side piece is so that I can make the middle piece exactly the same. I cut three out instead of two, instead of this. Okay, so I thought about that. So I'm gonna move that back, you'll see why. Oh, I take it from that corner, I snap it into that corner, and this one, I'll snap it into that one. Very easy to move around on SketchUp. I, I love the way the interface works. Okay, I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna zoom in. This time I'm gonna take it from the middle point, okay? press control, and I'll bring it along here in the red. If I hold down shift, it'll lock in there and I'll find the midpoint, just slowly go along here, midpoint, there we go. Already in the workshop, we've had some people that have drawn it, that have started to put it together and they've ended up with a smaller side here and a bigger side here. The reason would probably be is that they measured to the end and did it like that. So they did this on the midpoint instead of this midpoint, the midpoint. Obviously that is not a completed unit because the idea is that the disc fly through into the other player's side and there's also holes there. By the way, I do have the, uh, the um, latex rubber, the surgical rubber, ready to go. Um, so I need to cut a little hole in the bottom of here. 
I could do an R, I could hold, whatever. Um, if I was to change that now, I'll just grab a here. They all change, okay? So what I do is I select it, right click and make it a unique piece, okay? And I'll, I'll cut a rectangle here. Before I cut the rectangle, I probably want to think about the disks I do. Now, let's draw one in. Um, I think about, if we use a um, roughly 39 mil or 38 mil hole saw, you'll end up with probably about a 36, 37 mil um, circle. We need the radius of that. Let's do 36 divided by two. Um, what does that work out to be? 18. About there. In the middle of it, there'll obviously be um, the center hole, which will be about um, six mil. And then we'll bring it up. I would cut that out at 19 mil. Maybe, yeah, maybe 12 would be better. I'll come down seven. 12 looks better. Okay, now I'm going to drag a box around that from the left, right click and make it a component. I didn't give that a name, but I guess I could have called it Puck or something like that. Um, and then I can move it around my um, my table. You can see going through, all right? So before I cut this hole here, I, I would have an idea what I was going to do those discs, okay? I'm just going to leave that there for a minute. Then on here, I'm going to, I've made that unique. So if I right click and it's not available anymore, I must have already done it. I'm going to double click on it to go to edit mode. Now I'm going to draw in the rectangle here. I'm going to start from the bottom edge and bring it up here, but I'm not in the middle. Don't start from the middle yet. I've just started over here from this edge. Um, let's see, with 36, I need a little bit of space. If I make it too small or really tight, the game will be really hard. I think it would be nice if, now, we'll, we'll test out in the workshop. I think let's make it um, a nice, even 10 mil either um, overall. So I'm going to make it do, 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 46, maybe? 40, 46. 12 will be too tight. I need to come up a little bit. Maybe. 15 mil. Now that I've got that there, what I will do, it's just a rectangle. I'm in edit mode. I'm going to double click on the rectangle. I'm going to go move and I'll move from the bottom. And then I'll just find the midpoint on the top. So I'm in the middle of the bottom and I'm looking along here. And if I hold down shift, there we go. And I've held down shift and I'm going to bring it up here and find the midpoint of that top line. Now I'm going to cut through. So push pull to that edge, and I've got that there. Let's have a look and let's have a think. This is the designer. This is what design is all about. Grab it from the face and, and put it roughly there. Let's have a look. Let's go in. Let's move it down a bit from this edge. Okay, so it looks like it would be a good size. We obviously won't know until we go in the workshop, cut one out, and test it out. Um, as for the rubber, the rubber is six mil diameter. It needs to be, if I grab that disc, I'll grab that disc, okay. If you think about it, I'm going to bring it over here. If you think about it, the rubber needs to be about here. So I can flick those discs back and forth. If you put it too high, um, well, it might work, but you obviously can't have it up here. Okay, so I would be thinking six mil up may become about 10. Once again, we're going to have to test out in the workshop. And then, depending on how far in you have it here, will be the strength of the rubber to flick it back. You don't want it to go too hard because it's just going to hit here and keep bouncing back at you. It's not going to be a good game. 
You want to find a good balance, okay? You don't want it too hard. You don't want people not to want to play. Um, I'm going to come into this part. I double click this edit. I'm going to use the tape measure. Tape measure. And I'm going to come from this edge here and go to say, uh, I would be thinking that I don't want to, I don't want to have the rubber band up here because that's just stupid. I need some space where the disc can end up. Let's come, and I think stretching back about 45, 50 mil. So I'm going to do it 45. And I'm going to come up a bit. So there's the, the top. If I hold down here, the top of the disc, 12 mil. I'm going to go back again. So we're looking for the center of the six mil. We don't want it to flick over top of here. Ideally, I would be thinking six mil, but maybe come up eight. I can see that arrow is blue, it means it's going straight up. I'm going to type in eight. Um, the hole. Let's do a six mil hole. Three mil radius. And from the end here, I'm going to do, I see it appeared on the other side. Um, let's get our tape measure back. And we came in 45. Type in 45 there. And then I'm going to double click on this circle. I could draw another circle, but um, good way to remember it. Okay. Take it by the center, press control. Bring it over here, zoom in if I have to. And um, let's cut those through. This edge. Okay. Now obviously there'll be about um, four or five discs on each side. I might quickly, now um, if I hover over that center point there, I'm out of the object mode and I'll press left arrow. I'm just quickly going to draw in so there'll be a rubber band there. Maybe 20, I'll bring out another 10. Okay. Okay, so that's my rubber band. I'm gonna triple click on it and make it a component. There's my disc. Imagine that being flicked back. Now, SketchUp's only a um, sort of surface modeler. Um, you have to do a, uh, add some add-ins and that to make it uh, use physics and stuff like that. So it's really just to give me a look of it and a little bit of an idea. So I can't like make that, um, not easily, not through this version. I can't make that sort of rubber properties and bend and stretch and that. I can with other software, but not with this. I just want to have a look at it. It's just a visual thing. Okay. So I'm figuring I can pull it back to there. I will have to go into the workshop and see if that gives me the results I want. So I'm going to go from that line, press control, I'll go and shift on the red, go to that line, and that gives me a bit of an idea. I could, um, Duplicate this one here and go, uh, let's have a look what it looks like with five on the table. I'm going to do control, bring it about here, type in four times, and then I'll move them. Turn control off. Move them a little bit. Oops. Uh, go through there. I'll move them just 
randomly sort of around like that. And then I might take move them over here. I don't want them to look too um, similar, so I might uh, might even rotate them a little bit, get them in a different spot. There we go. Okay, that looks like a table hockey game going on. I've got a little bit of testing to do. I want to test that hole in the workshop. I want to test that distance there and maybe the size of this. Um, just to get rid of those lines, I'll take those. I went into edit mode, press delete. And then double click on there. Delete that one. Okay. Um, let's do a couple of modifications. Let's think about the design. Okay. First of all, I'm going to take that, the whole lot, and I'm going to duplicate it over here. Now, if I wanted to get into more joinery and making things, um, butt joint's not a particularly uh, good joint. You can see the end grain, uh, and the glue over here gets sucked into the end grain there, so it's not really a great joint. Um, let's make that uh, a rebate. It'd be very easy to do with the tenon saw. Um, I'm going to take that, go to edit, and I'm going to pull it in like that. Now, rebate should come in a third, okay? Not a half, a third. Okay, so rebate should come in a third, and then your nails go through that end there. So we've got 19 mil timber which is three quarters of an inch. So it's a quarter of an inch we're going. If it's three quarters, we can do the one quarter in. Okay, this is why um, woodworkers tend to use imperial because they're easily divisible. Um, if I'm a builder, a carpenter, cabinet maker, and things are kind of difficult to divide, numbers like 19 are hard to divide evenly by three. I just go to the nearest three. So for, for what I would say, if it was 19, you say, okay, the next number down or up that I can divide, the closest one is 18, 666. Six, six. Oh, the beast. Um, so six mil, which is close to a quarter inch. Okay, so I'm gonna come in six mil, type in six, and that's how much I should come in with a rebate on both ends, six mil. Um, then I'm gonna click off. You can see the rebates happen here, but we need to add a little bit here. So I'm going to double click, go to edit, get my line, which I would have with a tri-square. Now, this is where the abstract thinking comes in. I know there's a face there. I know it's selected. I can still pick it, even though I can't literally see it. Okay, so I've done my rebate there. Let me do it again on this end. Okay, I take my pencil, draw a line down here. I would draw that on with a tri-square. I would then cut it with a um, marking knife, cut the grain. Then I would saw down here, so here, and this I'd mark with a marking gauge. I'm gonna take rebate and it'll snap. Even though those aren't getting selected, it's still gonna snap to the edge and done. Now, if I come over here, it's the wrong way around. They're identical pieces, but I will click on it and I'll go right click and flip along. For me, that should be the green. Okay, there we go. So there it is. I've got a rebate joint, which gives me more surface area to glue. It's a stronger joint. My nails go in this side, not in this side, okay? So they go through here into that end grain there, not here. Um, then a little bit of putty, a filler. I would skew the nails in a little bit like that. It's a good, strong joint. There's a rebate joint. Um, 
I've changed this one too, and I want to keep all my designs. So I'm going to go uh, flip along green. I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to delete that. I want to show my drawings, and I should have made them unique, but I didn't. So I'm going to click on here and make unique. I'm going to get rid of that one. Make unique. And uh, I'm just going to get re reverse what I just did on this one because I want to keep it that way. Double click there, push pull out like that. Uh, good practice is to delete the lines I don't need. Push pull. So SketchUp is um, it's a little bit um annoying the way it's you kind of work on top of yourself and you kind of iterate on your design. I know that I went in um, 6 mil, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to go double that to 12. Have a look what I do here. This is good, uh, good practice for you. I'm going to click that one, that one. Those two I want to duplicate over here, but kind of rotate them around. This time instead of move, I'm going to go to rotate. And I'm going to find the middle point here. Okay, I'm going to hold down shift. Oh, once I get the middle point, actually, I don't need to do that. I'm going to bring it out along the red. Hold down shift. And then find the middle point there. So it's the middle point of the whole bit of timber. Go and go like that. And then rotate it around. But this time I'm going to press control and rotate it 180. Done. I've got both versions. Uh, I could show a customer. And say, look, this is a better joint, but it takes more work. There's more, um, it'll take longer to build and it'll cost you more. And I say, I love that. What can you do about the bottom? Mm, okay, the bottom. The customer doesn't want to see the end grain there. Wants it all hidden. Okay, um, let's take that design. I'm going to go for about 10 more minutes. And let you have a go. I'm going to copy it over here. Um, can I make it all unique? Yeah, okay. I'll make it all unique. Which means that and that and that won't sort of combine. Okay, so what could we do? We could um, make this smaller. Let's go into edit mode. So double click. Let's bring it in. Um, to there, bring this in to there, let's bring that in to there, okay, and let's make, I still want that distance there to be 45 but what I will do is I'll add to this I'll say okay instead of cutting at 45 mil I'm going to cut it add 20 mil make it 65 oh that that worked out good they, they kept that as component this one here I'll bring down to there okay like that That'll make the unit a bit bigger, more timber, but it'll be hidden. I could put, um, like some students have done, I could put a cleat on here. Maybe it doesn't need to be too much. Maybe I could make it out of a bit of 12 mil. I could do a little cleat like that. Make that a component. Bring it over here. Okay, so I'll show you from the end. I'll take this end off and let's have a look. Okay, so I'm going to just move that down. So you can see where the bottom would fit on here. That's, that's not a bad method to do. It would mean that you could possibly leave this base as a um, bit floating, not nailed, not glued, and then it could be lifted up and changed and stuff like that. Although this would be an issue um, if that was nailed in, but that could even be 
attached to okay there you go you could even take this this attach them together i should have done a little groove and join in there but i'll do that later um i could even slide that under the rubber or pull the rubber back bang in in uh, i can see some issues there with getting it through but you know i could i test it out so i could have a two or three of these with different sized uh, holes to make the game more challenging you could even have different games maybe have one that had um uh, three different sizes on there or, or something like that now, there's a whole bunch of things i could do with that that's where we're thinking and this is allowing us to kind of visualize that um i'll go back control z if i didn't want this and this if i didn't want to use that i didn't want the base loose now there's a few issues with that um, I would say sitting on a tabletop, you could do with some little feet on here because you'll find that solid timber tabletops and, and places where you're going to play the game aren't always flat and I reckon it'd be annoying for it to wobble. So you could put um, little feet on it. You could, you know, um, do like that on four corners okay that would make it more level uh you could even do something with a little disc you could even take one of these when you're cutting them down here this one you could even put a little Disc like that while you're doing it, and I have four with a screw, countersunk screw in the middle, or something like that. And that would lift it up off the table. That'd be a good way to do it. Um, or if you were making your top and it was made out of 3.2 mil, so let's just go in um, A little bit so from seven mil to three i've got to take four off there and then let's take that edge in okay let's say that came in um six mil to there you could even have that i'll bring it down a bit so instead of a cleat Instead of this cleat here, you had something like this. I'll draw in the reverse. Do it over there. You could even have something like that. So that would be cut by me you would bring me that piece i would cut it probably before you cut this rebate off um about six mil but this would be floating you wouldn't make this really hard up against there you wouldn't put any glue in there it'd be like there'd be a little bit of space in there we call that a, a floating yeah bring it in one mil Okay, so it'll be like that. It can't come out, but it has a bit of movement in there, okay? That's how I'd do it, and I'd also bring it out here into that piece. So we cut those grooves before assembly, and we'd have to be very careful when we assemble it, we do it in the right order. That would mean um, this piece here, you would probably want to bring it out into there. Um, I'd be thinking here, you could just do the same, come in six mil, And then cut, oh, go right to the corner. So I'll go from there. It might come down like this. Um, 
and um, obviously I'd want to bring that down a bit further and take that away and that would be a really hard pocket for you to cut but if you were to take this all the way down under there that wouldn't be too bad do that with tennis silver for assembly this would have to be bigger which means that would have to come down a bit let's bring it down take that corner put it in that corner so that means it needs to come up a bit and um yeah so just by changing a few joints there it's made a few of the um, dimensions different but it's allowed me to think about it before I do it okay so using CAD has allowed me to you know play with a few ideas and come up with some good ways now I haven't gone overboard I've just worked on um, a little bit of joinery I could also change the game I'm going to save this one so you can work through the pucky game remember if it really lost you to start with if you were really confused, go back and please do the truck. Or even if you want to do one of the U7 projects on my YouTube page, the passive speaker, those things will set you up to be able to do this. Not a problem. I haven't done anything particularly um, difficult here. Uh, it's, it's all been pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm going to stop that recording. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to record making, um, instead of the table hockey game, I liked uh, one of the student in the class's ideas to make it into a basketball game. And I've got a few ideas where I would go with that. Okay. So work through there. See what you come up with. Save your versions. Okay. So keep version one, version two, version three. Put them in your folio. Um, I'll make another video on how to put in the folio in uh, a little bit later today.